AI is replacing human beings in the market. No, it? AI is not going to replace humans. We have our one impeccable guest, Mr. Saran Bonde. And when I went to a Swiggy, it was COVID. It was all chaos. My manager trusted me. There is a chaos. Saran has to be there. Don't wait for a right time. There is no right time. Start it today. There is a quote. Life is a mystery to be lived and not a problem to be solved. So today's podcast is about engineering the future. And today's conversation will be based on AI, technology, leadership and most importantly, the roadmap to build a fulfilling career in tech. And today, to talk on that, we have our one impeccable guest, Mr. Saran Bondre. Everyone, please welcome him with a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So, you have basically spent a lot of years in building systems, you know, that methods, the scale, scalability and real-world problems. Uh -huh. So, now, before we dive more into it, we would really like to know the human behind all these codes. Like, how your journey, engineering journey started before all that, where you pursued it before or like, you just went with the flow, how it all started. Uh, initially, when I started, it was as as everybody here. It was simple. Like I also wanted to build my career, but that was the time when it was recession. It was two thousand eight. Um, that Lehman Brothers. I don't know a lot of folks here. Even they know it or not, uh, but it was the time, and that's where I started. I was very desperate, like every one of us, to get into an industry. Um, as I said, I landed in one of the very small company. Uh, started learning how to solve the problem. Uh, but the pivot came uh, when you be a, when you are a founder or co-founder because you are not simply coding then you are also managing teams uh, i didn't ever intend to manage a team it was like very natural i was just simply writing my own code and some other folks sitting beside me he was also writing a code when he faced a problem he used to ask me and i used to simply answer him help him debug it uh, understand um, uh, how to put the logic which technology um, I started writing small snippets. Uh, these are some of the tech terms. Uh, basically, I used to write one program in one tech stacks, then the same in Java, then the same in Python and the same in Go. And then I used to simply measure which worked best. So you also mentioned about managing teams hmm. in, uh, over there. So how was it for you? Like, you know, from individual contributor to managing teams over there. So how did it shape you or you feel any contribution it had made in your personal growth? Managing team was never an intent, as I said. Yes. But then uh, when you walk that path, when you yourself write a code and if some of your team members are coming to you, they're looking at you, they're expecting some answers from you, they're expecting you to help them, they're expecting you uh, to guide them. and. Because I have done it and I have been doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it was an effortless thing for me to do. Um, and the team I was managing, they were also engineers and they were also struggling with some of the problems to stall. The only thing I followed, I always tell them is like, just don't jump on the word. First try to understand what is the problem you want to solve. If you want to pinpoint any one decision you look back that has totally changed your like mind shift and mindset and you know the journey that you are right now going through one decision that you have taken back and now it is reflected yeah one decision which i have uh, taken is to be consistent uh, so when i say consistent consistent doesn't mean it's like uh, it's like doing same thing again and again that decisions where i started building systems i also incorporated in my personal life as well so i need to trust uh, the systems rather than uh, looking only at the goal. Uh, I would like to now, you know, shift the gears and would like to ask that you have been working at Backpackers, you have co-founded, then Swiggy is also in the scenario and amidst all of that also Smile is there. Hmm. Like Smile is one such thing where you have totally changed and improved how the whole engineering function would work. So doing all of that, how in between uh, Prayog came into the scenario? So when I started with Smile, uh, the objective was to build uh, a systems. Basically, earlier they were working on some of the ERP systems. And now we need to move uh, to a distributed architecture just because 
the earlier system has reached its limit its limits in terms of scalability maintenance management it was uh, it was very old tech stacks with the new gen ai thing coming in it was very difficult to, to accommodate with that then we started solving those problems uh, with the smiles and what we realized is like uh, while working uh, we realized like this is the problem that might be facing by multiple other organizations as well so what we saw is like almost um, 60-70% of a organization across the globe, they're still working manually or, or some kind of Excel sheets. That's how they manage. Can you share one real life example where AI has you know, significantly contributed, meaningfully contributed to the logistics and all? Like, for example, delivery, let's take into that consideration. So just imagine like um, during this Diwali season, there are offers going on. Yes. Lot of folks orders on the same day because of discounts. Now is it all like the place where you are ordering the same uh, object or the shipments or the inventory that you order, let's say you order a mobile phone, it is not necessary like it is still in the same city where you are ordering from, it can be in a different city. So what happens like as soon as you, you make the payments, the, the request goes to the system inside system which actually finds where the nearest inventory lies. And that request goes to that warehouse and it says like, okay, uh, this inventory lies in this shelf and it is supposed to be shipped by this time. And that is how the in, in, uh, instruction goes to the warehouse. That is a booking system from where you ordered. It goes to the warehouse system where it is actually lying. And then the actual transport happens through a transport management system, which we call as a TMS. Now at any given point in time, you need to know where is my shipment. and Obviously, as a customer, we want it now. Yes. When we want it now, the obvious factor you need to understand where it is lying. <laughs> so there are different statuses. In a technical terms, we call it status. You you understand it like ready for dispatch. Yes. It is in transit. It is out for delivery. Those are the dis different status that you read. Now talking about as we are talking about AI agents and you have reduced it from seven days to 24 hours almost. So AI agents have been uh, been the chatbots hmm. that they are responding to. So on that note, before the AI agents and everything, it was all handled manually by human beings and everything. So the myth or is it a true that is uh, like I'm throwing the question to you that it has been to the students and the young professionals minds that AI is replacing human beings in the market. So how do you view that aspect? Like, is it really a threat or a collaboration? Just imagine like when calculator came or computer games, is it like we, everybody lost jobs? No. So when calculator came, accountant shifted themselves to some other statistics. They started doing more work. When computer came, like people imagine like now there are no jobs because typewriter was getting replaced. But actually it creates more job opportunities. You see, like you have built Prayog and with such a limited number of people. Hmm. It is a very basic question, but still the answer is kind of, you know, not a very static answer we're getting. Yeah. Like, to, to, to answer you straight, yes. no, AI is not going to replace humans. Okay. AI is with human. It will be always. If you're saying it as a competition, for sure you are, you are, uh, you are not going to beat AI. Yes. So definitely. you have to be a friend with an AI and that's how you will improve your productivity. In today's uh, world, like everybody, wherever layoffs are happening and this and that and everybody is blaming in general. Hmm. I'm not telling that they are. So I'm pretty much sure <coughs> I also uh, believe the same. They are not like upskilling has to be there. Yeah. So on that note, like any suggestion, like one day anybody comes to you and asks you like, sir, what should we do so that, you know, we can also be uh, like allying with the AI rather than competing with it. AI is not going to replace engineers. That's for sure. Now, what is that that will happen? The engineers who do not collaborate with AI will lose. The engineer who collaborates with AI will get more. That is how it will happen. Just imagine this, like building one website, it used to take me like 30, 40, one month, two months of time. Now I can do it in three hours. We also have seen your uh, like personal branding on LinkedIn and all. So what suggestion would you like to give to our young professionals? Like how should they brand themselves so that you know they will get that kind of visibility and exposure? 
the most important thing to understand here is like you have to blow your own trumpet now uh, that's that's the thing you need to follow for your branding i didn't intend a lot for a branding but what i used to do is like whatever i used to learn uh, i used to write it i used to post about it so ultimately what happened is like like minded people started connecting with me and they started engaging with me it's the same framework i used to follow consume produce and ember that's a framework i follow so slowly like then i as I, as you asked me about my um, what is a personal thing rituals that i used to follow so i used to follow rituals even now i follow like um uh, three post a week one blog a week so i started like every two weeks i need to write one so that usually forced me to learn something new on which i need to write and that is how it all started i didn't emphasize is only on writing writing otherwise you would have not called me here on the podcast it's it's easily recognizable like i have not done things and i'm speaking about it so when you do things write about it go public it doesn't matter some will like some will not like don't run away just face the situation and that will give you more confidence and that is how people will also recognize you and i think that's a simple principle i follow i don't do any <laughs> big stuffs around so moving forward with your leadership we have talked about so much about ai and product and many things so talking about your leadership you have been leading teams and people and to start with at spigi as we have before talked about you have handled complex systems and everything so how did you manage to balance the innovation with the daily delivery targets innovation and daily targets yes i use a simple technique problem solving one on one there is a big problem that i need to solve which is my project uh, i just break it down into simple deliverable chunks deliverable i mean to say um, it is usable by end user that's how i used to break it down and to deliver that i used to again break it down at a day level what is that task that each day i need to complete and then every day there is a stand up that i conduct with the team there are only simple questions okay is it done is it not done if not done why not done and if it is not done then i simply need to to help them okay to realign the reprioritize whatever the situation is and that's how i keep a track on a day to day basis and i understand like instead of understanding things on 10th day or end of the project i understand it more upfront because i know it's a cascading effect if today i have not done something it just cascaded to tomorrow and then day after and then i need to pause oh we are drifting now so that helps me to keep me on track and that's what i said it has to be very consistent effort every day so simple mechanism problem solving one on one break it down into simple chunks measure your everyday progress so before we move further with uh, the q and a we have a very quick rapid fire where i'll be asking some very few questions it will nearly take 3 to 5 minutes so shall we start yes okay so one ai tool you love using right now abacus.ai if not a tech leader what would you be doing army officer I'm your officer nice coffee or code review coffee okay one unforgettable project or bug bug okay a book podcast or quote that inspires you there is a quote um life is a mystery to be lived and not a problem to be solved wow okay it was written in my school okay nice okay we are about to wrap the this was all about rapid fire anyone with any question yes please My name is Amisha Patel and uh, it was really nice to hear you today and uh, my question from you is I want to know your routine as a first year student or like I'm also <coughs> going to graduate in 4 uh, years or maybe aspire to build a company so basically how you build your skills what was your routine and what were your priorities at that time don't wait for a right time there is no right time start it today get as many internship as possible go to the industry talk to the folks build your network <coughs> and network has to be dense and diverse that means like you don't need to talk to the people only in your industry talk to the people outside your industry what they are doing how they are doing so you will also understand like how can you contribute there so that's the most important thing and one thing i consistently do is like i do practice 
lot of practice. So I started with monolithic, then moved to microservice, then moved to Kubernetes, then moved to cloud, now with an AI. So there has always been pivot every three years in my career as well. So it is not like I, with what I have started and with what I am doing today, it's very different. So, so trust me, by the time you pass out from the college, it will be a very different world. To, to cope up with that speed, I would encourage you to go out. Just, just go to the industry, talk to the foes, get an intern. That's an easy way. What's the most common mistake you see among fresh graduates when they enter the industry and how can they avoid it? They come with a very prejudiced mindset. I want to only work in Java. I want to only work in Python and not doing any code before. So uh, that's what I see most common things that comes. I want people to... Usually people try to define their destiny before even entering into industry. I want to be a front end. I want to be a back end. I want to be a DevOps. Why do you want to do that? What I would suggest is if you are in a first year, in next four years, try to explore all of this. And then you will understand what you enjoy most and then start doing that. So you look for your opportunity in that direction. Otherwise, it's like you just enter and then you realize I'm not enjoying it. Okay, thank you everyone for all of your questions. So, before we wrap it up, I would like to ask you if you have to uh, like explain in one line your philosophy to your perspective and approach to your engineering. So, what you did with So, my life has always been uh, to be consistent. I believe like consistency will take you far than where motivation can. Okay, thank you Saran for such a beautiful, you know, insights and it was really very easy to understand like all layman terms and very simply decoded each and everything. I myself was like, okay, tech, term, tech terms will be there and everything, but no, it was really insightful about leadership, AI and technology and all of this summit up that that is how we engineer the future. Thank you very much.